Forward. I met Scott Bentz in college. It would turn out to be one of the most rewarding and beneficial friendships I've had the privilege to be part of. Of course, back then, I didn't know any of that. My first thoughts of Scott were, man, this guy talks a lot, followed by an observation that he had a generous spirit about him. He is the type of person who genuinely roots for your success and is not envious when it comes. I noticed his propensity for altruism early. I had the good fortune to attend an inaugural ball for the President of the United States. Went out to D.C., wore tux, all kinds of cool stuff. When I got back, Scott had tracked down the school newspaper and convinced them to do a story on me and my time at the event. It was the first of many times that I would benefit from Scott's generosity. In addition to being close friends, we have also worked together three times. Sometimes that has worked out well for us, like at Real Truck. And others were more learning lessons. Our first time was with a cellular company in the early 90s. Nobody had cell phones. I bet Scott and I were two of the first people in Minot, North Dakota, to rock the handheld brick phone and the bag phone for the car. We were salesmen. Back then, you were going after rich people who could afford such luxury. Try to convince them to sign up on the gold plan, which got you 180 minutes a month. Scott was a hard charger, driven to success. You would rarely find him at his desk. This was not a good fit for us. Too much competition combined with too much immaturity. I think eventually we came to fisticuffs. So we parted ways professionally and continued on with life as really good friends. Scott went on to work for a large manufacturer as their national sales manager. It was fun to watch him doing so well. He used to call me from all over the country and we would talk for hours. I was very proud of Scott and not the least bit surprised that he ended up in that position. He was doing his Scott thing and working 80 hours a week and the success was following. Eventually, Scott had the idea to create a website that sold his manufacturer's product as well as a few others. I remember when Scott called me from Spokane one night to tell me he was going to start a website called Real Truck. I didn't think much of it. You have to understand that Scott was always calling with some business idea. So while it was intriguing that he was trying the internet, it was not that big of a deal. One thing that sets Scott up for success is he is not overly concerned with how things look to others. While many of us have to analyze how this will look, what will people think, what if this fails, Scott is not encumbered with this thought. He bulldozes ahead. So with sheer grit and determination, he grew real truck. Eventually, Scott made the decision to go full-time on this basement project. Meanwhile, I was floundering around trying to see what kind of a living I could make with a social science degree. Scott asked me to come work for this manufacturer and train with him to take over his job. This time, we were better suited to work together. I learned a ton. We traveled the country setting up deals attempting to help this product go national. Eventually, Scott left and I took over. I was now a director of sales and marketing for a fast-growing manufacturer. Scott was full-time at Real Truck, which was keeping its head above water, but just barely. Since Real Truck was one of our accounts, I had a good view of what was going on. I have to admit, there were days that I thought it might be over for Real Truck and Scott. Other people were starting to catch on to the benefits of e-commerce, and it was just a matter of time before someone came along and knocked them out. I point this out to set up the real part of the story. My days as a big shot director of sales and marketing came to a sudden end. I was terminated. It was devastating. I didn't know where to turn or what to do. I showed up on Scott's doorstep. Scott used to say he wished I could come to work at Real Truck. I would say, I don't think you can afford me, Scott. Pride begets the fall. There was no hesitation on Scott's part. While Real Truck was not in a position to hire me, Scott didn't care. 
I started working there in September of 2007, our third time working together professionally. As they say, third time's a charm. One of my immediate contributions was that I could help Scott filter 15 ideas down to a more manageable and attainable five. Make no mistake, this was not all puppies and rainbows. One day we were disagreeing so loud that our customer service manager came and closed our door and told us we were scaring people. We made a plethora of mistakes. We did a few things right, too. And then we hit gold. Scott had been inspired to improve our company culture. We had toured Zappos, and it lit something inside of him. The plane ride home was the quietest Scott has ever been. The real journey starts there, and that is the story this book will tell. All the pieces came together at just the right time. Scott will give plenty of credit to others in this book, rightfully so. It took a village to go on this journey. But let me assure you that while we all had our role to play, Scott was our captain. He was the one who was willing to bet it all on culture and keep our compass facing due north. The one thing I would like to say about this book is, I believe the map we followed can work for anyone. I believe that the principles you try to live by can and should be practiced at work. If you can stay on that path even when it gets turbulent, then I believe that the fortune you seek will come. Whatever that fortune is, let your principles guide you. Jeff Van Lanningham, President of Realtruck, 2007 to 2016.